Welcome to the advanced portion of our series on aerodynamics. We're talking today about aircraft propulsion. And so the systems that we will typically use on smaller scale systems, we often use brushless motors. The setup that you'll see for these brushless motors in order to run it is you have a battery, you have an ESC, which stands for electronic speed controller, We'll get into those a lot more on the electronics portion. You have your brushless motor. You'll see that abbreviated a lot. BLDC means brushless DC motor, direct current. And then you have your propeller. And so each of these are different variables that account for how much thrust that you'll be able to produce out of your system. So if you're wanting to optimize it, it's important to understand how all these work and what they're, uh, how they're specified. The speed controller, the only specification you have to worry about is current. I have one here, and you can see this is rated for 50 amps. And so you just need to make sure that your motor and propeller, when told to, produce, when told to reach certain speeds, are not going to pull more than that. And that's the only specification you need to know. Um, you can see coming out of the, going into a speed controller, you have two plugs. So those go to your battery and it receives power. And coming out of your speed controller, you have three wires. And so we talked about this in the last video. These are the three poles that are going to control your motor and control the speed. And uh, basically these are different sections of electromagnets that are going to be turned on, allowing your stator to turn within the motor. In general, whenever you're deciding on the size of the motor that you're going to use, there are several things that you're going to want to take into consideration. So the size of the motor is determined by four numbers. And these represent the size of the stator that is inside of the motor. The first two numbers are the height of your motor, of, of your stator within the motor. The second two numbers represent the width of your motor. And so both of these numbers mean different things corresponding to how much torque and therefore thrust and speed you're going to be able to produce out of your engine. However, the third and arguably most important value that you'll see is what's called a KV rating. And KV rating means rotations per minute per volt. And so if you have a 100 KV rating, that means if you're supplying it with one volt of power, which isn't a lot, it will rotate at 100 RPM at its max throttle. If you have a 1000 kV motor, which is more common in our sizes, that likewise means if you put 10 volts in and you give it full power, it'll go to 10,000 RPM, which is more like it. Your propellers also have their own specifications. You'll see two numbers associated with them. The first number that you're going to see is the size of your propeller. And so generally these two correspond. The, the higher kV your motor is relative to its size, the smaller propeller it's going to want to turn because it takes more torque to turn a larger propeller. And so if you want to spin that faster because you have a higher kV rating, then it's going to be a lot more, a lot easier for the motor to turn a smaller propeller. So just a general trend, the higher the KV, the lower the propeller size. And typically one motor will be suited to three or four sizes of propeller. The second number corresponds to the pitch of the propeller. The pitch is given in units of inches per rotation. If you were to think of it as a screw, so each rotation will firmly push yourself into something, it is how many inches are you going to get out of one rotation. So the blades of a propeller are tilted, and if you were to track that movement through the air, and, it, and if it pushed the air perfectly, how many inches through the air is that going to push your propeller? Is essentially what the pitch of your prop is. And these typically range anywhere from 3 to 15 inches per revolution. So luckily for us, the manufacturers have taken the optimization process and simplified it a little bit for us. So if you're looking to produce a certain amount of thrust 
for your aircraft, typically whenever you're scanning through engines, they'll have ratings to say, okay, at this throttle, we pulled this much current and we produced this much thrust at this RPM. However, whenever you're optimizing your circuit, there are a couple things that you need to know. So we talked about before how KV is equal to rotations per minute per volt. The rotational speed is really important to be able to equate. And so because we know that relationship, we can go ahead and say the rotational speed omega, which is in RPM, is equal to KV times your voltage. And really this voltage is the nominal voltage going into your motor. After you've taken account for some of the resistances that come through your speed controller, your whole electrical system, and the motor itself. And so this is called uh, back EMF voltage. But for, but for simplicity's sake, most people just take it as the battery voltage. Whenever we use lithium polymer batteries, as we often do in our situation, uh, the voltage is decided by the number of cells. We'll get into this more with the electronics section. But essentially, the number of cells your LiPo has determines the voltage that you have here. And so then we know this variable. You can decide this variable from your motor. And thus, you can determine your rotational speed, the top rotational speed that your motor can produce. Whenever you give your motor throttle, it's going to want to reach this speed right there. Your motor is also going to be able to produce a certain torque. This is also related to the amount of power going into it, not through the voltage, but instead through the current. And so your torque is Q, which is torque, and that is equal to a coefficient KT times I, the amount of current that is going through it, which I is also equal to the amount of current your battery can produce, and KT is equal to 1 over KV. And so through testing, you can determine I and thus determine Q, the torque that you're producing. Knowing how much torque you're producing is mainly important for knowing the efficiency of your motor because you can calculate that the efficiency of your motor is going to be equal to the torque you produce times omega, your rotational uh, velocity. This value is simply the power equals the power that's being produced by your motor and then you can then multiply that by V and I of your battery which is the, the power of your battery. So simply you have the power, your, out, the power output of your motor over the power of your battery gives you the efficiency of your motor. This is important in your final optimization because you'll have to take into account the efficiencies of your battery, the efficiencies of your ESC, and then especially the efficiency of your motor and prop combination. And so deducing this value with a given propeller is going to be very convenient. Lastly, whenever you optimize a motor, you optimize it for a certain cruise speed, the speed that you want to travel nominally most of the time. And so at cruise speed, your thrust is equal to the amount of drag you produce. And so in all of these equations, whenever you have thrust, you can simply substitute drag. In our previous videos, we discussed how you can deduce drag based on different parameters about your airplane, your aerofoil, and your wing. And so you can then substitute that this into your equation to try to determine what type of motor is going to be a best fit for your plane. So the thrust that you're able to produce is given by the coefficient of thrust of your propeller divided by rho, which is the density of the air, n squared, which I'll talk about in just a second, and the diameter of your propeller to the power of 4. n is simply equal to your rotational speed divided by 2 pi, so that's your rotational speed in radians. And then the coefficient of thrust is typically actually given by the manufacturer, and so you can find specifications on all types of propellers. And so you'll put these information in the omega, which you'll deduce from here, and then also from your efficiency and your power equations you'll determine what rotational speed you want to reach with your given prop. So these two numbers, you have to optimize together. And those are going to give you your thrust. And so generally, there are other factors which these depend on, mainly airspeed and other things. But generally speaking, that's how a motor-propeller combination is optimized. You have to know what propeller you want to use with your motor. And then you have to know what the KV of your motor is and make sure that it has the size that's going to be needed to produce that. The size of your motor needs to be optimized so that it can handle just the power output that you're going to ask of it in order to reach the rotational speed that you need in order to reach the thrust that you need with the propeller that you need. 
So you can see it's a very complicated process. And off, honestly speaking, it generally, generally requires a long amount of searching and pairing different motors and different props together and either physically testing them or viewing other people's test results in order to determine what kind of thrust you're going to need. And the easiest and simplest way to optimize a motor system is to determine how much thrust you need. If you remember, thrust is equal to drag, which you can then compute using the, no the nominal cruise velocity that you want to obtain with your vehicle. And so if you know your th cruise, then you can and you can calculate your drag, then you can calculate your thrust. And honestly, the easiest way to do that is to look through your specifications and look through previous test data and see what amounts of thrust the motor was able to produce at what speeds. Typically, you want your motor to be able to produce enough thrust to cruise at 30 or 40 percent throttle. So if you were to graph your motor efficiency over the amount of thrust that it's producing, your motor efficiency typically is going to look something like this. And it's going to be skewed very heavily towards your 30% mark. And also your propeller efficiency is going to maybe look something like this. And so if you think that is where you want your cruise velocity to be. And so if you can find the highest efficiency uh, setups just through test data, then that's the easiest way to find it. Otherwise, then you have to go through this process of calculating all these values, finding and pairing them with various props to find the values that you need. So that's a very rough explanation of how you optimize a motor system. We hope you enjoy, and I hope I didn't scare you away from brushless DC motors.